Salam and welcome everyone to the Femiso Now session, Better Than Business, about social entrepreneurship. My name is Hande Tashpanag, team member of the Active Citizen Study Session, and I'll be hosting today's session with an exciting lineup of guest speakers who I will introduce in a second. Um, Femiso Now is a live stream and podcast series by Femiso, um, and we will be live on both YouTube and Facebook. Um, Femiso, for those who are new here, is the Forum of European Muslim Youth and Student Organizations. Diese Sitzung year, wird aufgenommen. And uh, this year, 2021, marks our 25th anniversary. Um, and as I mentioned already, uh, today we'll, we will be discussing social entrepreneurship and community building. Um, we will, of course, learn more about social organizations uh, towards faith and the Waqaf Kepshi. Uh, and most importantly, why we need such organizations. Um, and for those who are watching right now, I want to ask you to actively participate to, the, uh, to this conversation uh, via asking questions to the speakers during uh, the session. Uh, you can put your questions in the comment section and we will take time uh, to answer those at the end of the live session, inshallah. Before we start, um, I would like to introduce you all to Shahbaz Mirza, um, founder of Ramadan Legacy, soon rebranding their enterprise to, towards faith. Uh, Shahbaz is a digital transformation specialist, an award-winning social entrepreneur, congratulations on that, and an international speaker. Our other guest is Simone Laforque, general director at Kepshi, uh, a walk of that provides services to facilitate uh, sacrificial meat for religious occasions. Um, Simon graduated from a top French business, uh, business school, worked in Islamic finance for two years and currently works as a stra strategy consultant, uh, as well being active in civil society and youth organizations at the same time. Um, so firstly, both of you have an incredible and very interesting background, uh, of course, related to the topic but before we go into that, I would like to know how we can define social entrepreneurship as it is today's topic. Uh, starting off with uh, Shahbaz, um, since I did read that you call yourself a social entrepreneur, um, what does it mean to you? Yeah, I think what, what does it mean to me personally is there's no measure of success. There, it's simply like a vehicle to do as many good deeds as you can. That, that, that's, what, that's what I personally believe. But what I was taught um, is that it's about the four Ps, okay? The first P is people. The second P is planet. The third P is profit. And the fourth P is having a purpose. And I think if you can combine all of those things into a venture that you have, then that's what would be a, a social business or a social organization. And you would therefore then be a social entrepreneur. And um, I think profit is the one that probably scares people off a little bit, but it's also a matter of, of reality that a lot of social impact startups in the UK don't make it because they unfortunately fail to monetize and grow and sustain themselves. So I think that's just as important as the other things. Definitely. Um, is there something you would like to add on that, uh, Simon? Like what is, what does social entrepreneurship mean to you? Well, to, to me, it means that um, uh, it, it serves society above all else. Uh, I mean, um, I'll, talk a bit more about the, the work system later on, but uh, um, I really, I, I agree with this uh, when, uh, when uh, Shab has, uh, Shab has uh, said about people in particular, and I'll insist as well on purpose because uh, generated revenue, um, you, when you generate revenues, you have to uh, direct them towards the, the legitimized 
goal. And uh, to legitimize this goal, you, you have to have a proper purpose. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and, 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 and I, I did find it quite interesting, uh, Shabazz, that you mentioned profit because um, that's something uh, exactly that I find interesting that within the Muslim community, uh, we don't talk about it that much. And Simon, you, you mentioned the system of waqf. That's like a concept very familiar. Maybe shortly, can you explain what waqf is for those who, don't, uh, who aren't familiar with the concept? And also, does profit play a role in that system as well? Well, definitely. Um, profit is the main, uh, I'll not say the, the, the end, but uh, it's the... It's one of the main uh, purpose, no, not purpose, but um, a walk basically is a company that doesn't have shareholders. Uh, so all the profits are redistributed towards some kind of purpose. Um, one of the oldest, if not the oldest company on earth, actually, is the walk of uh, Arthman ibn Affan. Uh, it actually sits around... 18 million, uh, 18 billion, sorry, dollars uh, of uh, worth, uh, and it uh, it is purpose towards uh, financing dawa and uh, uh, editions and things like that. So uh, it's uh, the, the the main the way it functions is that it, it generates revenues, whatever uh, whatever way it is. It could be you know uh, uh, real estate. It could be uh, activities such as we do. And then uh, redirect, uh, redirecting the profits towards, um, you know, sustainable finance for uh, pious organizations, for pious activities and good deeds, basically. Mm. Yes, very clear. Um, and of course, like uh, both of you have uh, have an Islamic background. Um, um, so what I was curious about is. Um, both of the organizations uh, do have the concept of um, uh, having this religious concept as well. Um, and as well as you mentioned, Simon, that it is something, uh, it, it goes way back in Islamic history as well. So I am very curious, what were your journeys towards the social organization? Um, and does it, of course, link to your religious uh, identity? Um, maybe start with uh, Shahbaz. Mm, yeah, it's a great question. I think growing growing up as a Muslim in the UK, um, my my sort of personal journey was every day you're the the there is a battle, right, and you're reconciling between your faith and modern day living, and the battle intensifies and increases and changes every year sometimes okay and for me when you're going into battle every day um you need to have the right equipment and i felt as if education is the strongest and the most kind of apt form of equipment that you can have and islamic education in particular serves as a way for people to sort of cope and overcome these everyday challenges that they go through, whether it's with, you know, everyday purpose in their work relationships, making decisions, communication, and their spirituality, mindfulness. But what I found growing up was in, in the UK particularly, is that although our religion holds the answers, they weren't communicated or presented in a way that young Muslims could connect to those answers and we're taught about the do's and don'ts and the rules and the fiqh of of our of our religion but we it isn't packaged in a way that allows us to take it and implement it into our day-to-day -day life and so that was my personal experience um, growing up and that's what's led me to I'm doing what I'm doing today towards faith, which is making Islamic education practical, life relevant, and exciting for, for most young Muslims in the world today. MashaAllah. And I think like the first concept was starting with uh, specifically with only Ramadan, right? Yeah, it's, um, we, we thought it's funny because we had like the baby before we had any parents and, and it was always it was it was always funny to 
Um, everyone always said to us, you know, why is just Ramadan? Why is just Ramadan? But we really took around like seven years to test and perfect this kind of way of working and figure figure out what we're doing as well, figure out what we're all about, what's our purpose and what's our theory of change and how do we want to make an impact on the world. And it took us a long time to get to a place where we felt comfortable and excited um, and confident enough to communicate that um, to the rest of the world. So Alhamdulillah, we're, we're, we're nearly there and it's an, an evolving journey. But um, yeah, we started small and just grew every year. And Alhamdulillah, I'm, I'm really glad we decided to go down that approach. Yes. And maybe um, because I'm very curious about the, the um, enterprise myself, uh, you mentioned the 4P. So the, the people, the planet, profit and purpose. How does the 4P um, is being answered in, the, in towards faith right now? Good question. Um, so people is, alhamdulillah, like in terms of the people that we try to serve, it's definitely the like the Muslims that perhaps feel as if they're not being served by existing organizations out there. Or what we call it is that the non-geeky Muslims, like we feel as if a lot of the other Islamic organizations out there serve the, the geeky Muslims, but then there's a whole, you know, population of Muslims that feel as if they can't connect to a certain teacher or organization. Um, planet, so we've, we actually just recently decided to um, use, you know, many of our freelancers and our sort of the printing company and everything that we use, we've decided to move that from countries that perhaps aren't as ethical anymore and start moving it to countries yeah. whereby, for example, in Turkey, using freelancers in Muslim countries etc as well um uh profit so our profit is always sort of slowly increased every year but we reinvest a lot of that like in product development and also launching new experiences as well um uh, so people plan and purpose like our purpose is it's kind of like wrapped up in, in all of the things that I've mentioned and, and what we said before about making Islamic education more Kind of contemporary and practical for Muslims in the world today. Yes, very beautiful. And um, going back to Simon, like um, you said, you are active um, for several months now as general director uh, at Kebshi. I don't know if you're also familiar with their history, like the purpose of uh, um, starting this walk of and, and, and the journey towards like where you guys are right now? Yeah, uh, compared to Shahbaz, I'm not the founder, uh, as you said. Uh, I joined the adventure later on, but uh, I know uh, a bit, uh, I know the founder personally, and I, I know the, 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 the background of the, of the story uh, of Kepshi. So basically, it started with the purpose, because every walk needs to start with the purpose. Without the purpose, it's not a walk, it's a company. Um, uh, it started as uh, a mean, um, you know, really humbly uh, to finance Dawa uh, on on the internet. Simply, like uh, you know, you might see behind me this, uh, you know, YouTube token token. It's it started just That's as so cool. Yeah, uh, it's, it started just as um, um, a mean to finance uh, a YouTube channel focused on on giving Dawa. That is a, a huge YouTube channel now in France, um, and. Uh, as it went on, uh, it, it's been three years now since uh, Kepsia has been funded. Uh, it grew so much that uh, we have we had to review the purpose because uh, the the, uh, the needs of the of this uh, of this channel were almost uh, every every need was almost covered. So we we now this year we had a strong shift in the, in the focus um, towards um, you know helping and financing mosques that are in development. So we basically have a team of 10, seller, uh, 10 employees uh, from which we have graphics designers, we have uh, web developers, and we basically are developing website to a lot of mosques here in France um, and giving the, in adding up to uh, the, the, the service we provide. So um, that's basically it, yeah. 
thank you. For free, um, I, I have to mention for the, the development. Okay, mashallah, good to know. Maybe you can share also the, the um, um, YouTube channel that you just mentioned. So the audience well, okay, can maybe okay. uh, Well, you can have a look, it's, it's one, two, three, it's called Jannah TV, Jannah okay. TV, yeah. Thank you. So um, I'm also very curious, like you did, you both did uh, touch upon it a little bit, but like, why is it overall very important uh, for us, for the community to start initiatives <coughs> like these? And uh, whoever wants to answer that one. I think that, I think the, the quality of the services that the Muslim community has access to needs to improve across all of the different sectors or services that you could think about from um, education to finance to food, charity, social housing, welfare. And, and I think that that's our key purpose here, that we're trying to improve the quality of, of service that the the umma has not just in the uk but also like across europe and, and across mm -hmm. the world as well and i think you know i i truly truly believe like when i wake up in the morning and you know i'm i'm washing my arms and washing my legs and i'm i genuinely at this point every morning i think about okay why why has allah given us the resources why has allah given us the know the, the opportunities and the education um as opposed to like having placed us in you know a, a disadvantaged country and, and not having all of these resources and i truly believe the the case is that we're supposed to create initiatives and ventures to improve the quality of services that that muslims can receive and improve our overall quality of life and genuinely, like, that's just my key, like, motivator every day. And I don't think think any more than that, other than I'm alive today, I'm breathing, I can walk, I can use my hands, I can think, let's do something good. This is what I'm really passionate about. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. And, and, that, and I think it can be almost as simple as that for, for people to, to get started. Yeah, definitely. Oops. To me, uh, I really think, uh, you know, as I worked in Islamic finance, I studied a, a little bit uh, Islamic economy. Uh, as you might know, in um, uh, an Islamic system, uh, the, the task, the, sorry, the tax, the tax rate, oh, I, I, I manage. the tax rate isn't really high. Like uh, the only mandatory tax is the zakat uh, and, uh, and it's for specific purposes. For every other purposes, historically, um, Islamic uh, Emirates, Sultanates, uh, Caliphates, and, and so on, have been relying on the Waqf system. Uh, in many countries in the Ottoman Empire, uh, about 30% of the economy were Awqaf, meaning uh, it's still the case in some countries. Um, some countries that were colonized uh, were completely dispossessed of their Awqaf, but uh, most countries like uh, Turkey, uh, uh, Morocco and uh, many uh, Middle Eastern countries still have big awqafs. And uh, like for Turkey, I think it's between 30 to 40% of awqaf. And without this uh, in, in, the global, in the total economy, so it's huge. Uh, and that's a way to finance and to keep the, the deen alive, basically. So uh, I really believe that if we want to be established as a community in Europe in the long term, uh, without relying on taxes, without relying on sadaqa alone, without relying on non-sustainable uh, systems, we have to really develop our path. It's it's starting on, alhamdulillah, and we have some big ventures that are uh, um, really doing great work. Uh, but it's still it's really uh, really minimal uh, compared to what uh, we have achieved as a community in other countries. Yes, definitely, and. Um to um, elaborate on that maybe. Um, Simon, you also have like, you work in Islamic finance, but you also have like a um, business background. Um, what do you think that are fundamental elements to start a social enterprise? Well, um, 
as I said earlier, I think the main thing would be would, would be the purpose. Uh, because if you don't have a purpose, uh, risking repeating myself, you will you, you, you will most likely start a venture because you have an opportunity, economical opportunity. That's great. Uh, you 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 might uh, make a demand, meet an offer, and uh, create added value and, and and make profits. But the only goal would be to generate profits for yourself or for any investor or whatever. Um, and so, to me, uh, the only difference, and it, it's a huge difference, would be purpose. Well, uh, there is uh, some companies that have a purpose and they still have shareholders. Um, some people uh, enter them into the, the into the social economy as well, um, but mo- most of the time, uh, to to my uh, the, the, the impression that I have is that most of the time uh, it is uh, you know a surface a marketing uh, way to say uh, we exist for this purpose we sell this purpose basically mm-hmm. uh, it exists a lot um, but uh, generally these purposes are created after the creation of the company. And uh, a, social entrep- uh, un- um, a social company to me, to me would be a, a, um, a company built it on purposes uh, ground. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Can I give some, some really good examples? So I, I was a part of um, a leadership program three or four years ago when 25 social entrepreneurs from around the world got selected and um, we, we stayed in London and there was two examples which really stuck out for me. One was a sister from, from Paris and another um, uh, a, a girl, a Jewish girl from the United States. So the, the sister in Paris had um, a social entrepreneurship startup called Meet My Mama and and you've, um, Simone's like smiling, so she, he's heard yeah, of her, you know, her, right? And she got into like the Forbes 30 under 30 as well. And she basically takes like refugee women and turns them into like cooks or they're already great cooks. And they, it's a catering company and they cater for all different types of clients. But the, the key part there is that she's helping refugee women, putting them into employment and you know, and, and that's the key essence of it. And I thought that was just incredible. And similarly, again, with food, but the the the, the Jewish um, girl in the US has uh, her company's called Kitchens for Good. And I thought this was even perhaps even more incredible, but she gets um, kind of men who have been in prison for a long time and they come out of prison and she has her enterprise that they are trained to become um, professional chefs, like top quality professional chefs. Um, and they have a restaurant and they also have a catering service as well. Um, so I thought those two were just incredible examples of, um, you know, social, socially oriented companies that have done incredibly well um, and, uh, you know, have made a, a really a positive impact on, on all of your stakeholders. And if I can cast my mind back to my sort of corporate management consulting days, like planning out all of your stakeholders on a spreadsheet, if you can benefit every single one of those stakeholders, that's a really good like litmus test for you to understand, okay, do I have just a, a normal company or do I have a, you know, a, a social impact or a social enterprise that that can grow arms and legs um yeah those two examples have always stuck out for me um yeah ever since uh, i um uh, i met those two amazing people that are doing what they're doing very inspiring example so thank you for sharing and while you were telling this um one thing did pop into my mind like i've been active in um, muslim student associations for many years and Every time we think of doing something in a good cause, especially within our community, our Muslim community, um, people assume it should be fisabilillah, like you do it with the right intention, you shouldn't gain uh, money out of it or make profit. But like that's very much controversial when you talk about social, uh, a social organization, social enterprise, it is actually also making profit. Um, and I, 
I would like to hear some kind of a message from you guys of like, it can be combined together. You can have a good cause uh, and make profit at the same time. And maybe like, how do you see that from a religious perspective? Well, um, generally speaking, religiously, that there isn't any uh, uh, problem with the, you know, profit or being rich or whatever. Everyone knows that. But, uh, you know, um, I don't really, uh, I haven't really experienced uh, personally uh, social entrepreneurship uh, outside of um, of the WAX, the WAX system, uh, meaning that I don't know how it works with shareholders, uh, with people owning the company. Uh, I don't know how, um, and I would be really interested in uh, knowing, uh, having your uh, feedback, Chavez. Um, I don't know how to negotiate between all the, share, the stakeholders, um, between the employees that are paid for the job, for their struggles and, and things like that, for their competencies, the, the owners and the, the, the people that uh, benefit from the actions. Uh, I, I don't know. I think that there might be some kind of negotiation, um, some kind of uh, way to, uh, uh, to, have a, to find a balance. Uh, and it might be really difficult with the, the WAF system. We don't have this struggle because we don't have shareholders. Mm -hmm. so the shareholder basically uh, in the Sharia, in the, in the Islamic law is Allah. So Allah owns basically the company. <laughs> so every profit is directed towards the goal it was settled for. And uh, obviously we have some, uh, uh, we, we're not all volunteers. Uh, we might have some volunteers sometimes, but most of the time we are employees, we have paid for our work, for our competencies, for, and uh, yeah. So I, I, I would like to know, Shabas, how, how do you manage? Uh, and it, did you have uh, some experiences or do you know companies that have uh, struggled with, the, with this balance uh, between shareholders and employees and, uh, you know? Yeah, so, so another great question. Um, I, th I think there's like a variety of, of, of options and it's never, there's never a, a silver, a silver bullet answer. So one of our, one of um, our co-founders at Towards Faith, his name is Mohammed and he's a sort of a coach or a venture builder is what they call it for social impact accelerators, specifically in London. So he's over the past two or three years worked with you know, 20 to 30 social impact startups um, and, and help them to try and get funding from somewhere or another. And what he shared with me from his experience is that it's, it's either, you know, crowdfunding or, or even grant funding or a combination of both um, or just having paying users like paying customers, for example, like Warby Parker, the eyewear brand. So, I think in terms of the, you know, the funding and, and how to generate revenue, it can come from a variety of sources, it is flexible enough to do that. Um, and for us, how did we start? We started with crowdfunding as well. So we started on LaunchGood and we ran a couple of campaigns and that's how we managed to get that initial you know, funding that we needed to get off the ground. And then after that, it was just very good like financial management, not, you know, not spending excessively, um, asking for help rather than paying people, um, and really slowly, you know, growing our um, social enterprise like that. So I don't think there's like a sort of a, a one, one route to get funded and sustain yourself and grow. Mm. I think it's a journey that, that we all go through to try and figure out our, um, our sort of our, our, our financial strategy. Yeah. And um, what is crucial in order to maintain an organization with a social aspect? Shafaz, maybe you can start with that. Um, what's crucial? I think I'm, I'm going to, I'm probably going to be a bit of, this is going to be a wild card answer, but I think mm -hmm. you have to be aggressive. And, and I know that sounds a bit um, like daring mm -hmm. and unconventional, but I think if you have, you know, a social impact startup, I, I believe you have to almost work twice as hard as a normal startup because you have a point to prove, 
you're trying to be unconventional anyway, you're trying to change the system in, in which you're trying to operate in. So you have to be a bit aggressive, daring, um, bold, um, and, and, and unconventional, but portraying that in a way that's acceptable and communicates with people um, around you. Um, so take that example, like Meet My Mama, um, where there's, you know, refugee women cooking food for, you know, big corporate private events. Now, imagine a big corporate private event. They would normally want to know who the catering company is and, you know, how many Michelin stars do they have and everything else. Um, but they managed to really, you know, debunk that, you know, expectation from that, you know, that target audience and, um communicate in a way that really connected with those people in a, in a strong emotional way so yeah I think I think like you have to be bold dating but communicate your message in a way that that touches the hearts of people around you very beautiful and maybe you can give an example as well from like your own experience um you've been in Ramadan legacy or like towards faith for seven years mm -hmm. uh, as I can remember or was it nine years seven seven years already and that's <laughs> that's uh that's quite impressive so how were you bold and daring during that period yeah i guess good question um i think we so just as like context for everyone so in the past seven years i've always worked full time as well um so ramadan legacy was this kind of um night time and an evening projects or you know a, a love of labor is what we call it in the UK uh, where you do something and you don't you don't really know why but you're just doing it because you love to do it and um and only just recently um I decided to um leave my my full-time job or career um and, wow. and move into this full-time and I think the reason why I'm sharing that is sometimes it can take a really long time to get to a place where Number one, you can, you know, sustain yourself in a team. Um, and number two, you, you, you've you built enough of a foundation that you can then grow, grow, grow and build upon it. Um, but yeah, for the past like you know, seven, almost like nine years now, I've literally been, you know, like like Clark Kent. So, you know, walking into the office with a suit and, and then wearing a <laughs> robe in the, in the evening and the weekends. <laughs> Um, but without the without the the, the pants or the, the underwear over over the tights, <laughs> and um, and yeah, so it, 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 that's been our journey. So we, we haven't been bold or or dating um, in our communication, our message, but but we are going to try and be that almost like um, get the feelings that that we have inside of us and start to vocalize them and communicate them and and speak to people in a very authentic way but it's taken me personally seven years to get to that stage so if there's anyone you know listening to this and you know they have an idea um and you know they feel like they should leave everything that they're doing and, and do it i think i think like my best word of piece of advice is to let do the idea but let it evolve and marinate and nurture over time because it will change your your vision will be you know will evolve over time and it's good that it evolves over time because you're adapting to whatever the world is going through like today exactly exactly very beautiful and thanks for the advice as well um and i'm also um curious simon you mentioned a couple of times purpose. Purpose is very important. Um, and I think looking at the target groups right now, it is especially like the Muslim community, uh, even though it might be in two different countries um, or like towards faith is more international and um, the Waqaf is more based in, in France. Um, but how can we identify the needs of the community in order to start an, an enterprise or like a Waqaf uh, can you share something about that? Well, uh, first of all, uh, we are international as well because we okay. operate in 14 countries. So, uh, but uh, yeah, most of the activity is based in France. Um, how do we uh, address? Uh, well, I think the need, uh, as you said, uh, wasn't the purpose initially. Uh, 
Mm-hmm. Um, what is interesting is that uh, within our work, there is capture that is the main activity, but we have about three, uh, I think four or five startups uh, that are also uh, part of the work that don't have anything to, 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 to do one to, with another. So they are completely different businesses. Uh, some are like, uh, you know, uh, uh, family games for children or, uh, uh, or books for children, you know, Islamic books for children, uh, things like that. Um, there is uh, other project I can talk about, but uh, there is many projects like that. So the, the main uh, goal was the purpose per se was the, the, the purpose of the money we were generating. So what would it be financing? And it is financing nonprofits. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, most most of the time, uh, it's, it's weird to say that because we are a nonprofit in a way, uh, if we consider we don't have shareholders, but we basically are financing associations. We could be financing FEMISO, for example. But the the, 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 the the, the, the question you asked um, just before I wanted to answer as well uh, to Shahba is, uh, is all, how to sustain it, how to, to, to make it grow. Uh, I think the main thing would be, uh, and it's the mean towards the purpose, a great business model. A great business model. Because, you know, uh, some, uh, you know, business models aren't really sustainable uh, they are, it's a kind of, uh, you know, an in-between between volunteering, doing uh, uh, directly good and generating revenue in order to be full-time doing good. Mm-hmm. In our system, it's not the, the, the way we are paid. It's not, I mean, the intention, uh, even if we do it uh, anyway. Basically, uh, our, um, our mean is to generate revenue with a great business model that uh, do a lot of profits and then redistribute the profit towards, um, you know, great uh, uh, community building uh, organization, DAWA and stuff like that. So um, uh, I think being really oriented 100% profit in a way is a good thing because you have a sustainable model and you can uh, scale it real quick uh, and then you can distribute the profit directly. Um, that's why my question to Shabas uh, was uh, regarding the, you know, the legal structure, the, the shareholders and stuff like that. Because for us, the most important thing is the, is, the, is, the, is, the, is the legal structure. Is that it cannot be possible that any shareholders take from the profits after the costs. Mm. Okay, basically. Okay. So uh, uh, I might not be all clear, but <laughs> I think you get where I'm going. Yeah, in the UK, there's a couple of like different new structures that, that people can have. Um, so you can be a sort of a, a company that's limited by guarantee, so the, the shareholders can't run away with the profits. You can also have a community interest company. Um, in Scotland, where I am, there's a Scottish Scotland Charitable Incorporated Organisation, which is like a hybrid between a charity and a company. And so there's a lot of new sort of structures that have um, sort of launched for specifically for social enterprises. Um, I think in the US you can get a, a B Corp company as well. So I think there, there are structures out there which sort of guard, guard, guard all of the stakeholders within the organization. Um, so, yeah. And and to maybe just to because this is becoming a bit too technical for me as a layman, um, but maybe Shabazz also uh, because the the Ramadan legacy or towards faith um, has a, a specific kind of target group, and you do sell uh, products. Um, uh, whereas like Simon concentrates uh, it's on like distrib- distributing um, the finances, but. I still am very curious, like you came up, you came up with the identity, but how did you notice or how did you identify the needs of, um, of, the, of the target group in that sense? Yeah, that's a good, good question. You know, I think there's an academic answer that I can give for this. And the academic answer is, um, you know, because we do a lot of like um, customer surveys and focus groups and 
We build empathy maps so we understand the pain points of our customers, etc. But how it started was just was just instinct and and a personal story. And I think there's there's many kind of social enterprises and companies and startups out there whereby an individual personally had a problem. Um, so there's this great movie on Netflix called. I think it's called Madam CJ, and it's about the the the, the lady entrepreneur who is creating a, a hair care product, um, and she just had that problem herself as she was growing up, and she realized that a lot of other people around her had that same problem, uh, and it was similar for us. I had a problem <laughs> with um, with with sort of taking what my faith is telling me to do and applying it to key situations in my life like you know if I have an argument with my boss or a difficult time with my boss at work how does my faith play a part in helping me to resolve that or in my relationships or in my productivity um, or in my self-awareness and and knowing who I am or my decision making and the more and more people that I spoke to as you know I was you know traveling around the world for work or um or just traveling around for Ramadan legacy, I found that more and more people, we we just had this shared problem. And it was almost like the shared problem that no one was talking about because we're either too afraid or we didn't really want to voice how we were feeling about a certain thing. And especially when it comes to like Islamic education, I feel as if it's a one-way conversation. Um, I, it's never like a two-way conversation at all. It's always, it's always like whatever, you know, the person standing on the minbar is saying to the congregation, and that's what it's been for, for, for many years. But dialogue, discussion, um, you know, understanding, you know, how faith can play a part to equip us in everyday life challenges, it's just not there. Like, it's just, and it's funny because if you look at big companies in the world today, um, they put the customer first, mm. whereas I feel as if within Islamic organizations, they put their own curriculum first, but not necessarily the customer or the students first. And there's a lot of like research um, done by many different professors in the UK um, that teach Islamic studies about creating uh, an educational strategy for um, Muslims that is student-centered um, at, or human-centered based on their needs and, and what do they actually need to equip themselves for everyday living and, um, and overcoming those everyday challenges as well. So I can't remember the question of, of where I'm going, of going with this, um, but yeah, that, that's sort of like why, why we wanted to um, sort of take on that topic and it, it just came through the sheer number of people that had that sheer problem uh, and, and telling us that problem. And then that's what gave us a good enough reason to start this. Yeah, exactly. So it, it might help just to summarize, it might help to be self-reflective as well in order to understand the community needs, because most of the time you're the part of that community as well. Mm. Um, so and, and, and focus on um, the needs of the customers in general. Um, Simon, you wanted to add on, on that? Yeah, uh, well, uh, I think I was a, a, a little bit cold. Um, uh, previously, <laughs> we're, we're talking about the business structure and stuff. But um, I think I was more about uh, presenting the WAP system, that it could be just, you know, cold business that doesn't address directly uh, a social uh, need or community need. But it happens uh, that uh, all of our activity, if I... Uh, if I analyze them, uh, are serving a community need. And uh, to answer your question, uh, how did we realize that we had to, uh, to address this target group? Is it mainly because um, before launching these kind of activities, um, the founder and even myself, before being interested in it, um, we uh, were all um, active in the volunteering uh, environment. So we were understanding as volunteers and as, uh, you know, members of benevolent organizations, the needs of the community concretely. And um, and we were uh, seeing where there were struggles, where, where, where there were, um, you know, some uh, deep needs that, are, that weren't addressed because that needs sometimes a lot of investments 
uh, and uh, a lot of the times uh, archive are private investments like you know it, it, the founder invested his own money in it and many people are investing their own money in it I mean investing they are giving it or uh, are loaning it for free for you know uh, zero uh, interest rate but um, they are building and giving their money to 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 stimulate a business model that address these needs. And for uh, for France, uh, our city, we have two products basically. We are one is offering uh, the korban or udhiya, the, the sacrifice of Eid, uh, or sacrifice for you know a, a birth or a marriage or a death uh, in Africa, uh, in Asia. And the other one is from is for France or for European countries. We we want to expand soon, in, soon inshallah in other countries. Is um, is to deliver um, the 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 the, uthiya, the the korban, the, the sacrificed uh, animal uh, to the community directly through masjid or uh, mosque sponsoring through the intermediary of the of the mosque. So uh, there is a need in France uh, because uh, of uh, you know legal restrictions. Uh, import restrictions uh, and, and all these uh, issues, and uh, you know to expand a little bit quickly on the, on the other activities or the other startups of the of this work. Uh, I, I told I was talking about the you know um, the youth edition on Islamic uh, you know uh, Islamic learning in playing basically. Uh, that's as well a need that isn't addressed in the French language yet. So. Uh, we are really happy to to to, to deliver this service to, to our youth. Inshallah. And inshallah, may Allah help you to uh, provide that as well. Amen. And I think also a big benefit of um, um, our community is how generous uh, they are. Um, so I, I was also looking at the time, so I want to kind of want to go to uh, the end. But before we go, as I said before the, the session started, I wanted um, uh, the people who are watching right now also uh, be active and ask their questions. And uh, until now, there is one question for uh, Simon. And it says, I quote, you said, if it has no purpose, it's a company. Um, isn't it the case for company two? Um, I don't know if you understood the, the question. So um, they were actually, uh, actually commenting on your um, a comment about if it has no purpose, it's a company. Uh, and Simon, isn't it the case for companies too, I think? Uh, if a company doesn't have, I didn't get the question for it to, to be real with you. Um, Maybe the, the person who asked this question can elaborate on that um, and we can come back to it um, in, in, in a minute. Um, but before we go to that question back again, um, I actually am also very curious of um, after this session, of course, uh, your lives are going to continue and is there anything exciting uh, on the planning for uh, for the waqf or for towards faith um, maybe you you can share with the audience now as well thank you um, shabas was smiling so i think there is something <laughs> <laughs> i think i think i'm really like jolly and happy just now because i've like left the the nine to five corporate world that i was like felt as if i was in prison for the past 10 years and now i'm like finally working full time on my passion and, and and that's like yeah it's just it feels it feels great and I'm, I'm so happy to share that with with all of you and this is actually the first like um uh talk that we're doing as towards faith as well so it's <laughs> i'll probably i'll probably like save this and remember this for, for the rest of my life um but yeah we're you know what like it's so um normally what I find is like when you listen to these like podcasts and videos you you get like the the top level material like the thinking but then there's all of the, the doing part as well and you know for the past six months we were really like confused and we didn't know how to rebrand we didn't know how to expand what we're doing and we just recently you know managed to get it to click so now, over the next year, Shallow, we want to just launch a range of new learning experiences um, to, to solve specific problems. So the next 
um, problem that we're, the first problem that we're trying to solve is making Ramadan meaningful and memorable for people um, and, and a, a form of self-reflection. The next problem that we're trying to solve is everyday spirituality. So we're launching a new range of, of, of products called Faith and Focus. Um, and then we're also trying to solve the problem of how do we win at work and win in our worship as well. So we're launching work and worship as another learning experience under Towards Faith as well. And yeah, so so that's what's kind of gets gets me really excited and, and gets me, you know, out of bed in the morning. And, um, <laughs> and yeah, so that, that's really what, what we're kind of going to try and focus on over the next year or so, inshallah. And and we can follow that on the site, on the on, on your guys' social media. Yeah. On, on Instagram would be would be cool um, if you just search for Ramadan Legacy or Towards Faith, depending on when you watch this, um, or just or just go to our website or just Google it and you'll find something that you can connect to and follow the journey, inshallah. Thank you. And uh, for Simon? Can you just repeat the, the question? Because uh, I can answer on why I'm excited to go to work as well. Uh, I'd like to elaborate on that, but uh, I'm not sure it's the exact question you asked. So I think also because you, you are here from like uh, the walk of, are there exciting plans in uh, in the well, future nearby? Yeah, because uh, actually the you know the the eight is in less than one month, so uh, we are really into under pressure right now to you know to broke big deals with uh, with big organizations and uh, to you know uh, uh, to 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 make the you know the the bet basically. Of uh, you know ordering big uh, big quantities of uh, of animals in order to sacrifice them the day of their aid. So it's a it's it's a day to day struggle. I, I have uh, you know a big uh, working times, um, uh, and that's a great opening for for the, the why I found it really invigor uh, invigorating, energizing, and motivating. Is um, you know I I was away since you know it's been around. Eight to nine, let's say eight years uh, since I've been really active in the volunteering sphere in the Muslim community, and that has, that has always been taking a, a huge part of my life. And I was really motivating by, by motivated by this uh, this volunteering work. Um, and you know, uh, I married a few years ago, uh, and you know, my wife started to 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 say to me, you know, you you're you're giving too much to this volunteering work. Not enough uh, time for me and stuff. <laughs> and, she, and she was right. But uh, what I found really great about what I'm doing right now with Kepshi is that um, I can actually wake up in the morning, go to work, wake up early in the morning, go to work, <laughs> and, and and doing it full time and and still having some time uh, with my uh, with my family. Even though right now in the in the in this month I'm usually t uh, ending my uh, my day at work around uh, 10, 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. sometimes. So, well, it's like I'm adding up work plus the volunteering work in the same thing. Uh, I actually have a, uh, um, a meeting right after this live. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, I found it really, really passionate, uh, passionating. Uh, uh, and that's and, uh, very important, I think. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the energy that drives us and uh, motivates us to, to go, you know, this step further. Yes. Thank you for sharing that with us as well. And um, I did do a bit of my research, but I find everything in French. Is there maybe also like English uh, information accessible about the Wokov? Maybe people can follow uh, sites or links. Yeah, we have uh, actually uh, another brand for English for English speaking countries that's called Yellow Sheep. Um, so that's the full English uh, website. Uh, we are targeting, you know, uh, English countries uh, that uh, English speaking countries that don't have a really well organized community, uh, a small com Muslim community, and uh, we, we might maybe we'll soon, you know, translate the Kepshi website. It depends on the branding. We have many brands actually um, for different targets, target audience. But uh, yeah, you can have a look to yellowship uh, that that com. I think. Okay, thank you, thank you so much. Um, okay, I didn't get any response to the question. Uh, inshallah, maybe in the. I, think I get it right now. If you want me to answer, I think I get of it. Of course. Okay. Uh, I think the question was something like, uh, "You said quote, you said." Uh, uh, 
uh, if company, it has no not, purpose, yeah, it's if it a has company. no person, it's a company. But isn't it a company as well? I think uh, that's how I understood it. Well, um, I, when I said company, I was uh, really talking in a legal perspective, in a legal framework, and especially in the Islamic framework. In the Islamic framework, you have, uh, you know, uh, musharaka. That's uh, the in fiqh al You have musharaka. Musharaka is basically people associating, whether with money or competencies, to found a, a company with shareholders that distribute that pay employees and then distribute the the, the profit between them. And uh, in the waqf, uh, we still have a business model, employees, but we don't have shareholders. Mm -hmm. So that's the difference. Uh, it's only legally speaking, mm -hmm. but uh, when you have tons of money uh, that are piling up, basically, uh, and you don't have shareholders to give it to them, you have to purpose this money towards a specific goal. And that's what I meant. Maybe that's clearer right now. I understand. Thank you. Thank you for answering that question as well. Um, and overall, thanks uh, to Shahbaz and uh, Simon for joining us today and sharing uh, their expertise. I myself did learn uh, a lot and I hope the audience uh, did um, as well. Um, thanks for listening in and um, see you at the next Femiso Now session, inshallah. Take care and have a nice evening. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Bye-bye.